so far we have seen what are series of complex numbers and different results related to them so for example how to check their convergence we we have seen many different methods to check their convergence then we define power series functions using uh, the results of these complex series okay? then uh, we promised that we are going to construct new and interesting complex valued functions using the information and knowledge about series now in this module we are going to fulfill our promise and we are going to construct some very elementary uh, complex valued functions so when i say elementary it means that we are going to construct the complex version of some very elementary uh, real valued functions so for example trigonometric function logarithmic functions exponential functions hyperbolic functions etc etc now when we are constructing uh, these complex versions of their corresponding real valued functions then what should be the conditions on these newly constructed complex valued functions so one of the condition that they should satisfy is that uh, for example if we construct cosine uh, if we uh, construct cosine z which is the complex version of its real counterpart cosine x then what should be uh, the conditions on this function uh, the condition one of the strong conditions should be that when we restrict this complex number z to set of real numbers uh, because set of real numbers is subset of set of complex numbers so when we restrict this z to real numbers then we should exactly get the same function cosine x which is the real valued function which is the real counterpart of the same function okay so uh, and of course uh, we should get the same properties okay so uh, for example if we are uh, considering cosine x and sine x uh, then cosine square x plus sine square x should be equal to 1 and uh, similarly the derivative of exponential function should be equal to itself and other properties like uh, e raised to power uh, z1 plus z2 should be equal to e raised to power z1 into e raised to power z2 so these are the properties that we expect that our newly constructed complex versions of the real valued functions should have okay now what is going to be uh, the strategy so the strategy is going to be very simple so we have real valued functions we have their series expansions so for example if we have uh, exponential function it has a series expansion if we have uh, cosine x it has series expansion if we have some other uh, real valued elementary real valued functions then of course under some conditions they have uh, uh, their series expansion okay so for example if we are given this real valued function that we can see on the screen f of x it has this uh, series expansion a n x minus a raised to power n when n varies from 0 to infinity now what we what we do if we want to construct the complex version of the same uh, function if we want to extend uh, the domain of this from real numbers to complex numbers so what we do is very simple task just replace x which is the real variable with this uh, complex variable z okay and uh, in general we are going to call the new variables to be cn and alpha instead of a n and a so that's a very simple strategy uh, we are going to write down the series expansion replace x with z the complex variable and that's going to be our new uh, complex version of the same real valued function okay now in this part we are going to focus our attention uh, to the complex exponential function okay so we know that what is exponential function e raised to power x where e is a uh, constant it's an irrational number it has value which is approximately equal to 2.7183 and uh, the, it is one of the elementary basic and important function in the real analysis now we want to see if we want to uh, construct a complex version of this uh, uh, real valued function or not okay so according to our strategy we we need to write down uh, the series expansion of this uh, real valued function e raised to power x and on the screen we can see uh, the the series expansion which is equal to 1 over n factorial x raised to power n and varies from 0 to infinity okay so according to your strategy what should we do if we want to construct e raised to power z which where z is a complex variable okay so that's right we are going to just replace x with z and it is going to be equal to 1 over n factorial z raised to power n n is equal to 0 to infinity now this is the complex exponential function Okay. now uh, our next aim is to prove different properties of this uh, complex exponential function 
okay so uh, there are two uh, fundamental properties uh, which are associated to uh, complex uh, fun uh, exponential functions in the real analysis so one of the basic properties its derivative is equal to itself and the second property is that e raised to power x1 plus x2 is equal to e raised to power x1 multiplied by okay so on the screen you can see its addition in fact it is uh, multiplication e raised to power x1 multiplied by e raised to power x2 okay and uh, we want to see if these properties hold uh, for complex exponential functions or not. And also, we will be uh, giving the proof of this Euler's formula. So, Euler's formula, we can see on the screen, we have discussed it in our uh, initial modules, we have used it, but we haven't seen the proof of uh, this thing. And the reason is very simple, because uh, uh, we haven't defined, okay, uh, in the initial uh, discussions, we haven't defined uh, how to uh, calculate, how to evaluate, how to define e raised to power iota theta. In the power, we can see a complex number. Okay, and now uh, in this module, we have defined what is e raised to power z if z is a complex number. And uh, so that's why uh, in this module, we will prove this formula e raised to power iota theta is equal to cosine theta plus iota sine theta. Now, let's begin with our uh, first uh, discussion where we want to show that whether these two properties hold in the case of uh, complex exponential function. Okay? So, uh, they are, these are two basic properties. Let's begin their proof and uh, let's begin the proof of the first property. There is only one definition we know of this complex exponential function which is in the series form. So, we don't have any other option apart from using this definition. So, e raised to power z is given like this. Now, we want to calculate its derivative and uh, the, the definition is given in terms of series so if you connect these two problems and these two information then there is only one result that we want to apply the term by term differentiation and if we want to apply the term by term differentiation then we need to find its radius of convergence okay so uh, because uh, the result involving the term by term differentiation requires that we know what is the radius of convergence of this uh, power series function. So, to calculate its radius of convergence, we use this uh, D. Lambert's ratio test and for that we need to know the nth term which is 1 over n factorial and we want to calculate this limit n approaches to infinity cn plus 1 over cn. Okay? Now, cn plus 1 of course is 1 over n plus 1 factorial and cn is 1 over n factorial and uh, if we simplify them then we get this limit n approaches to infinity 1 over n plus 1. Okay, so when n approaches to infinity and uh, we have in the denominator n plus 1, then obviously the whole thing is going to be 0. Okay, now the point is we know from uh, D.L. Lambert's ratio test, if uh, the output value of this limit is less than 1, then uh, the series is going to be absolutely convergent. And we know that in this limit, there is no condition on z. So for every complex number z, this series is going to be absolutely convergent and hence uh, the radius of convergence is infinity. In other words, for each and every complex number, this series is going to be absolutely convergent. Okay, so we, now we know what is the radius of convergence. Now uh, let's have a look, let's recall what was the result about term by term differentiation which requires this radius of convergence. So if this is radius of convergence, then the function is infinitely differentiable for each and every element in the radius in this disk of convergence and in fact we can calculate its kth derivative how to calculate the kth derivative so it's a very simple task uh, just take the nth term in this series and find its first k uh, derivative in, in other words the kth derivative and just replace the kth derivative over here and we also change uh, these indices from 0 to k okay so that's uh, a very simple uh, procedure and according to this result we can also calculate the values of ck but we are not going to need in our proof okay so what we are going to need only this formula for k is equal to 1 now let's go back to our situation now we have this uh, derivative of e raised to power z and uh, according to that result we just calculated the derivative of this nth term so this is definitely going to be equal to 1 over n factorial n z is to power n minus 1 so that's why it becomes n over n factorial z is to power n minus 1 Okay, so this is going to become n is equal to 1 to infinity. So 1 over n minus 1 factorial z is to power n minus 1 because when we cancel out this n with n factorial, so this n factorial can be written as n multiplied by n minus 1 factorial. So n and n will cancel out and we get n minus 1 factorial. Now, what is our aim? We want to show that this derivative is equal to itself, the function. Okay, and so that's why our aim is to show that this expression, this expression over here is in fact e raised to power z. 
So we want to compare this with the definition of e raised to power z. So over here, we, the index starts from 0 and over here, the index starts from 1. So what do we do? So if we change the value initial point from 0, from 1 to 0, then this n becomes n plus 1. And hence we get exactly the same e raised to power z. Because when you replace this n with n plus 1 and this n with n plus 1, then we get this definition, which is the same as e raised to power z. So that's the first proof, which is kind of a guarantee that first first property, first basic property uh, of our complex uh, version of exponential function holds. Okay, now let's go to the second property. So the second property is we want to prove this thing. Okay, so once again, there is a multiplication over here. So um, uh, to prove this thing, we want to consider this function e raised to power z, e raised to power zeta minus z. Okay, so first we want to show that it's a constant function. So to prove that it is constant, we want to calculate its derivative. So the derivative value is equal to by just product rule, e raised to power z, e raised to power zeta minus z, multiplied by e raised to power z minus e raised to power zeta minus z, and these terms will cancel out each other, and we get zero. And if the derivative is zero, the function is constant, and if we want to find the value of that constant, we just evaluate the function at just one point in the domain. For example, let's choose zero, and whatever the value of the function is at zero, it is going to be the value of the function, because the function is constant. So it is basically a constant function with value e raised to power zeta. Okay. Now uh, let's in particular choose z to be z1 and zeta to be z1 plus z2. Then our function g of z uh, becomes, okay, because g of z is also equal to e raised to power zeta. Okay, so e raised to power zeta is equal to e raised to power z, e raised to power zeta minus 1. So zeta is equal to z1 plus z2. So that's basically our this term. And secondly, e raised to power z. So z is z1. So e raised to power z becomes this one. And e raised to power zeta minus z. Okay, so what is uh, zeta minus z? So this is going to be equal to z1 plus z2 minus z, basically, which is z1. So they will cancel out each other. Okay, so and we will get z2. Okay, so let's say this is z2 and this is z1. So we will get z2, and that's going to be our next term. Okay, so uh, that's uh, the proof of the second property. Now, uh, moving on to the Euler formula, let's see how to prove this Euler formula. Okay, the well, starting point obviously is going to be the definition of e raised to power iota theta. We know uh, how to define e raised to power z. It is 1 over n factorial, z raised to power n, and approaches from 0 to infinity. But if we replace that z with iota theta, then this whole definition is going to be 1 over n factorial, iota theta raised to power n. Now, if we want to uh, prove that this is equal to cosine theta and sine theta, uh, then uh, we need to write down its even and odd terms in separately. Okay, so for example, in this uh, series expansion, there are going to be terms corresponding to n is equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and up to so on. So what we do is, we are just writing down the even terms over here, 0, 4, 6, up to so on, and the odd terms over here, so 1, 3, 5, 7. Okay, so... Um, of course, if we see that n is, when n is equal to 0, this is basically 0. Uh, for n is equal to 1, this is 2. For n is equal to 2, this is 4, and up to so on. And similarly, when n is equal to 1, we can see that this is basically uh, equal to, sorry, uh, when n is equal to 0, uh, this is basically 1. And when n is equal to uh, 1, this is going to be 3, etc., etc. Okay, so uh, these are uh, even and odd terms separated. And if we simplify them, so we, we are just taking out this iota over here. So iota will not be here. So it is iota, iota raised to power 2n, okay? So uh, we are just taking out this iota from iota thetas, okay? So in the next step, uh, of course, there is not iota over here. So in the next step, it is going to be equal to minus 1 is to power n and minus 1 is to power n because uh, iota raised to power 2n, okay? So iota raised to power 2n can be written as, okay? So iota square and then raised to power n, which is going to be equal to minus 1 is to power n. Okay, so, and this iota is basically uh, can be written outside uh, and we are not evaluating this thing. And uh, what do we get? So, from real analysis, we know that this is the series expansion of cosine theta and this is the series expansion of sine theta. In fact, we are just writing down minus 1 to power n. That's basically the proof of the Euler formula. And using Euler formula, we can prove the other properties. So, for example, what is the Myers formula? So, we have used this formula in our initial modules. Now, we are going to prove this thing. So, the proof is going to be very simple. So, uh, we can write down cosine theta plus iota sine theta as e raised to power iota theta raised to power n. 
and which is going to be equal to e raised to the power iota n theta and which is going to be equal to cosine n theta plus iota sine n theta okay so over here we are once again using the Euler formula and uh, this is the property of the exponential functions okay so moving on now if we take z to be equal to x plus uh, iota y then e raised to power z is equal to e raised to power x plus iota y okay so which becomes by the property that we have proved that e raised to power z1 plus z2 is equal to e raised to power z1 into e raised to power z2 using this property we can write it down in this way and using the Euler formula we can write down e raised to power iota y to be equal to cosine y plus iota sine y okay and which basically uh, becomes the e raised to power z is equal to e raised to power x cosine x plus iota sine x now this expression is very important because uh, this helps us to see different properties of these exponential functions so one of the properties for example if we restrict z to the real numbers what will happen okay so this definition implies that if z is equal to x plus iota uh, 0 okay if we restrict this thing to real numbers then e raised to power z which is equal to e raised to power x because uh, okay so cosine 0 plus iota sine 0 so sine 0 is 0 and cosine 0 is 1 so this is basically the real exponential function okay so so the first criteria is kind of satisfied and uh, the second criteria we have seen that they are also satisfied for example the basic properties of the exponential functions are carried to the uh, complex exponential function okay and uh, this expression is also useful for example if we want to check the continuity the differentiability of this complex exponential function now in this module we have defined complex exponential function in fact we have introduced a strategy to define complex versions of other elementary functions in our next module we will continue studying exponential function and its different properties